got it. Welcome to Binary Jazz, where we don't know what we're doing and we forgot how the show works. This is me, Chris, Jazz Sequence on the internet, uh, joined as always by my friends, uh, companions on this wild and wacky journey that we call existence, uh, Binary Gary, who's Gary in real life, and Allison Plus, who's Allison in real life, uh, and uh, this is a podcast, and uh, we hit the record button this time. Uh, 2022 is hard. This is what, what the thesis is. But mm-hmm. we're here, and we're back, and we're not going anywhere. We're still, we're still around. Mm-hmm. There we go. Mm-hmm. That's our intro. It's what I can muster today. Um, being around is, uh, is what we do best. <laughs> being around. Just, just existing. Kind of naturals at it. Yeah. Not bragging, but... <laughs> I actually, actually got, com- I actually got complimented yesterday for like my ability to just be around. <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, no problem." I'm like, really, I'm like finally in my element. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, I'm sure that it was meant in the best way, but uh, it's a tough one to put out there. No, I mean, like it was in the context of my volunteering. So, yeah. um, and that's, it's kind of exactly what I'm supposed to be doing is like being around just in case. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, yeah, in this, in this environment. Okay. Presence. Um, uh, when it's necessary, I don't know how to say this the right way. Uh, Allison, you can say it much more eloquently because this is the world you live in now. But like presence when it's necessary for someone's like emotional health is is uh, just a super gift. Yeah, gift. I, I gift. think so too. It's like creating creating space for nothing, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> Which doesn't sound like a skill. But... <laughs> I I was thinking um, uh, we're coming up on the time of year when uh, we pick apples and. Uh, mm. I, the first time I picked apples in my life was two years ago. And um, that was the my, first time of, in your life that you picked apples was two years ago. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you know this or not. I'm a native Floridian. Uh, <laughs> they don't, they so don't we have, have crab apples. apple trees down they don't there. Have apples in Florida. We do. They're just imported from any, from elsewhere. I don't, I don't know. There's probably some apple trees in Florida, a handful of them. But like going to an apple orchard is not a thing you do. Ask him also, how many times he's picked an orange. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, lots, <laughs> lots. I mean, I lots. figured that. I yeah. mean, well, any citrus, probably, probably. But like, not even accidentally. Like, not even like there was an apple tree on. I guess, I guess they. I guess that's not a thing. If they're imported from elsewhere, then there wouldn't just happen to be an apple tree on somebody's property or on some. In some I like place. the most phrase accidentally, like accidentally picking it. Like apple. you're just like stretching, and then all of a sudden you're like. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Um, I mean, because because so. Uh, I don't know if I, I probably did. Um, there's a, a, you know, the national, uh, national park, uh, um, Capitol reef, uh, national park, uh, in Utah. Um, there is a campground and there used, there used to be apple orchards there and they still maintain a smaller, but, uh, uh, a, an apple, a couple apple trees, a couple other fruit trees that are just there that are, you can go in and if there's stuff there, you can pick it. Um, so like accidentally, like you just happen to be somewhere. I mean, like, you know, obviously I'm privileged that my last house that we're trying to sell is, has an apple tree on it. Um, but, but yeah. I actually, I will recant my statement. Two years ago, <laughs> was not the first time I picked an apple. Yeah. Yeah. After all this, um, the first time I picked an apple, uh, was only a few years prior to that. Okay. Uh, it was this huge family vacation with my parents, my grandma, two uncles, um, my sister, her husband, her two sons. This is pre-Charlotte, so uh, Katie, I think, was like an infant at the time. My sister-in-law, my brother, was stationed overseas, so she only had one child. I mean, it was just mayhem. We we rented this huge house on the backside of an apple orchard. Uh, Amazing. So there we, yes. yes. And then within six months, like 25% of those people were dead, so. But not from the apples. I, I'm not, right. Right. Correlation is not causation. <laughs> yeah. No, not from the apples. Uh, but I, what I was going to say is two years ago when we picked apples, that was a spot where like, I will hold on to that memory. Uh, and I like to just like 
fall into it sometimes, but like holding Charlotte and like this beautiful breeze on my face, looking out mountains in the distance, like, you know, beautiful sky overhead, a few clouds dotting the mountains and uh, her pulling that apple off and like holding it for me to take a bite of. And it was, <laughs> I mean, like, like, it was like there was like this moment of magic and I I mean it was how long could it have lasted, you know? Forty five seconds, sixty seconds, but like it was just like this like this temporary like infiniteness that was just oh felt so great. And and it didn't matter, like, you know, nothing mattered. That's yeah, the was... kind of thing where when they talk about like seeing your life flash before your eyes, you're like, Can I rewind this bit? Like 20 times <laughs> that's yeah that's what I, I hold on to and i actually think that it's it's in my head more today because uh we're right around that temperature here outside so i have the windows open and so i'm sitting in this chair and feeling that breeze on my hmm. face and i happened to shave today which i don't do often and i shaved before we went to the orchard it's weird <laughs> that i can remember that but i remember how that felt on my shaved face and just it just makes me smile inside and out so now I'll have to go seek out some apples. Yes. So my parents will be here in uh, two weeks uh, to visit the kids. Uh, well, us as well, but mostly the kids, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> and so we have a we have a trip, an apple orchard trip booked. Cannot wait. We and... have two little apple trees oh, cool. on our in our yard. Do you know and one is producing and the other one is almost like bearing the brunt of all the bad things. Um, like it's just diseased and like slowly mm. falling and like we're we're going to get rid of it but we we're gonna we tried to bring it back this season basically because it was already ailing but the other tree is like untouched and beautiful and fine but then we're like oh but we need two like we can't, <laughs> this, this other one won't survive on its own <laughs> needs a needs a companion do you know what kind it is um we're not sure um I think the, they're it, paradise apples is okay. the closest. They're like these small, really compact. Yeah, mm. we we did a we tried to identify what our apples were. There's some website that that Aaron found, and I don't even remember it anymore. And I don't even remember what they were called. But like, it's applepicker.com. Is it? How could how, how could it not be? I don't know. Oh, I have no, no idea. But... <laughs> I was like, wow, so out of the gate. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, applepicker.com. <laughs> Um, Careful, you might stumble upon something that you don't want to stumble upon. Ooh. Uh, yeah, and, and ours, I can't remember what it was called, but it was like something golden. And we, we, we figured out that it was probably likely because it because they grew in Utah, in parts of Utah. Mm. And, um, and like the size and the coloration um, seemed to match with with what we saw so but like there's so many and there's so many variations and there's so many things and especially like like you know you you get the five varieties of apples at the store and like you, you know the the assumption is like well these are the only five apples that exist in the world right um but there's thousands and thousands and thousands of variations and things that just you know, existed uh, before people, you know, harvested these very specific types of qualities and made the five types of apples that we that we know and see at the at the grocery store. Yeah, Robin didn't really like apples until he tried more mm. more apples. Because yeah. <laughs> he was just yeah. like, I don't know, it's kind of soft and like whatever. And I was just like, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I mean, especially if if like when I was growing up, the only the only apple that existed was red delicious, <laughs> which was definitely red. But I don't know about the second part. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, I, it's hard to think of an apple as a blank canvas, but literally it's a blank canvas. Yeah. <laughs> you want tart. You want sweet. You know, like you want firm. You want mushy. Like it's there. Yeah, I, I, I find my per personal preference leans towards the, like, the right balance of tart and sweet, but like a crunchy apple as opposed to like a soft, mushy apple. Um, There's something incredible about biting into like a crunchy apple and like the way it breaks in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And it's it's like, it's so satisfying. Yeah, so I, I, so like, satisfying. I like honey crisps. Um, mm -hmm. probably my favorite. Um, and the apples Damn. that we had at, at, at the other house were crunchy and kind of sweet kind of tart kind of like a granny smith but small sweeter than a granny smith 
um not as not as much of a bite as a as a um honey honey crisp and not as much of a a sort of a snap like not as it's a little bit softer but but they're they were tart enough especially if you got them at the right time or at the wrong time i guess um that that we would put them in like apple muffins and then you get like a you know that apple mm. bite um I'm gonna come down with uh, from the hills, the mount, the apple <laughs> hills the mountains, with the apple hills. So yeah. so much apple cider, Johnny. And apple chips, and like the first year we went, brought back like a gallon of apple cider. Eat Mr. Appleseed himself. But now I need to get like half gallons of different varieties. Just Senor Appleseed, please bestow upon me. Damn, I should get some friends over. We should do like an apple cider tasting. That would be fun. Yeah, that's gonna happen this year. <laughs> We're gonna have a cider tasting. Mm. Damn. I'm uh, gonna eat so some apples after this call. This is not the topic today is not apples, yeah, by the way. Uh, it's not. Like, uh, it might be. Uh, we yeah, the way this show typically works, uh frequently, uh, is that uh sponsored by applepicker.com. Sponsored by <laughs> applepicker.com. Uh <laughs> is that Allison brings us a topic that we know nothing about, and then we try to uh, bullshit our way through a discussion debating the finer points of said topic. Uh and uh hijinks ensue and then at the end we find out how close or far we are from the the, the truth uh, and i hear that we actually do in fact have a topic today it's true and like every time uh, you might know yeah, this might. i don't know <laughs> um the topic this week is saccades saccades it's spelled hold on i'm not i have i i am unprepared it's been so long, I forgot how to how to binary jazz. <laughs> uh, all right, so we take that and we do that. All right, and saccades. I'm ready for the spelling now. <laughs> <laughs> it's spelled S A C C A D E S. Okay, so that is not uh, related to cicadas. Exactly, yeah. that's where I was oh, going. Cut to. you off right there. Yep, yep. Because that was my first thought is like, well, obviously the root here is similar to the root of cicadas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, that would be incorrect. Uh, I can tell you that it's, there's a French word in there. Um, but th that won't help you because I don't no. think either of you know French. <laughs> well, I mean, I, 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 I know, uh, I know Duolingo French. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what you're saying is you don't know French. <laughs> <laughs> yes, essentially. But like, I can't say I don't, I can't say that it's completely uh, foreign to me. Is, mm -hmm. uh, is this not the abbreviation that's used when like a quote is written and someone corrects and they put SIC period in parentheses oh. next to what's corrected? No. But, but why would okay. it be SIC if it's an SAC word? Oh, is it? Shit, I wasn't paying that well <laughs> attention apparently. <laughs> My I was bad. just like, because maybe it's like misspelled, and that's like the whole gag. Yeah. So, I'm mean, sorry, can you spell it again? S A C C A D E S is what I have written down. Damn. I don't know why. I don't know how I missed that. There's not an I in there at all. No. Huh. I think I was thinking of cicadas, and that's, I just yeah. got that stuck. Yep. Yeah. Nothing uh, to do with bugs or language correction. Well, maybe it has look, to do language correction. In look and sound, it feels like it's related to facade. Uh, and that is also mm. French, I know, because it's got the little curly thing under the sea. Uh, and so a saccade. <laughs> if a facade. Maybe it's the opposite of a facade. I was trying to think of what the uh, opposite just like, of... It's exactly what you'd expect. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to. Th yeah, right. Yeah. It's the thing. It's the, it's the thing that you expect is. is... Oh. <laughs> if a facade is an artificial sheen. In front of yeah. something disguising its appearance or look as which is something different than a saccade mm -hmm. is it looks like it is <laughs> <laughs> looks but <laughs> looks like a duck quacks like a duck it's, it's a, a duck. duck the saccade is it's a duck <laughs> i feel like maybe it, maybe you're onto something here and perhaps that instead of it being a duck a saccade is like conforming things to a specified normalcy specified right so a facade normalcy. would be like make it look you know pretty or whatever and a saccade is like make it look like every other thing specified normalcy is my new prog rock band 
Mm. Mm-hmm. That they only they only perform uh, songs that are in in weird time signatures. So you no doubt have these buildings popping up around you, where it's like the first, like the ground floor is like set in a little, and then you come up, and then it's like the corner is like there's like a brown stone and like a white stone in rectangle shape, but that's it's it's uh, this new age apartment design. There's like three apartments being built around here that have the exact same look, and it's no, driving me we a have uh, we batty. have apartments and condos that are just square just i mean just square just rectangles that are stacked together uh that's basically what this the is first, usually the first floor is like one substance uh mm-hmm. maybe brownstone could be stucco we don't know uh and then the second and uh, upper floors is like i don't know some kind of paneling kind of looks mod Should be exciting yeah yeah so all of those, but they're all just identical. straight rectangles. Yeah. yeah, I know. Oh, I know. It's like what what will be what will be written in the history books about this particular like architectural design period? Nothing, because they're like, all going to fall over. They're not going to they're not going to survive the apocalypse. They're guaranteed not going to survive the apocalypse. Yeah, the things that they're... will survive the apocalypse are like you know the house, like the old houses that are made out of brick. I mean, there's not going to be much of them. They'll be I... rubble, but they'll be like stand a few walls. I'm going to answer my own question. The the 21st century uh, architectural design uh, will be defined by uh, profitability and utility above all else. That's it. <laughs> Nothing else matters. And I hate it. Here they have what my realtor called the BC box, which is like oh yeah, a rectangle. But they all have the same layout where you enter in the foyer, and then there's stairs up, and then stairs down, mm. and that's how you get to the separate floors. And we saw so many houses like that, and it's and they're all of a certain age, and like it's just really boring. There's no. <laughs> One of the things that struck me, so uh, last week, uh, Hurricane Ian landed yeah. on the Gulf Coast of Florida. Missed you. And one of the things that struck me is the area that it was hit. Now, it hit a, a very wide swath, so I'm not going to overgeneralize. But yeah, but didn't it any, land in Tampa? Uh, well, south. Uh, south of Sarasota, um, almost where Charlie came ashore. And I, I was in Florida when, um, when Charlie was uh, set to make landfall, and I lived um about 15 miles north of tampa on the gulf coast and so uh, we packed we were in an apartment at the time we were at the um they they do flood zones by letter and i think it's a b c d and e and i think we were in e we were in the highest maybe d i'm not sure if d and e would whatever the highest is we were in e so we were the highest which was i don't know like maybe like nine feet above sea level or something and um uh we were uh, highest as in like like topologically like E yeah. is the highest top. So, so the highest, the highest point, the highest zone in all of Florida. Is no, 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 no. In our in our county. Okay. And then okay. there are then there are, there are areas that are are not in flood zones. So okay. So the, high, the highest. So the yeah, yeah. highest in the flood zone is nine feet. Oh, above. I see. Okay. Yeah. It. Sorry for the confusion. I don't know. I don't know. If that's the number. I don't I was, remember. I was going to say it wasn't like, a lot because because we were in Jacksonville. We were um, like thirty ish feet, and we were not in a flood zone. Yeah. So we were way up there in Jacksonville, like 30 way feet. Way up like, there, 30 feet. Get a, get a, and literally, if you were a, a runner and you needed a train with hills, you came to that area of the city to run because there was actually elevation change. I know. It's really. Anyway. It's really endearing. <laughs> the, oh, I know. I know. It's like, oh, I'm getting a nosebleed. I'm up 30 feet above sea level. <laughs> From the driveway at, at the house we are now to the backyard is like a drop of like 20 feet. And <laughs> when we moved in, it was just like baffling, like m- like coming down the hill with our crap. Like, I was about, oh. And you know, my first thought is, oh my God, so good for sledding. And then I'm like. Yeah, we did. It snowed here and the kids slided down the side and I was as happy as a clam, whatever that means. Um, <laughs> So uh, when Charlie hit, or when Charlie was scheduled to hit, we went down to, and, and where we were was not far from where the city I grew up in, uh, Tarpon Springs. So we drove through Tarpon Springs, assuming it was going to be destroyed. I went to go see like landmarks that I had grown up with just to see them one more time. Um, and then we evacuated. We took our cat and we went inland. 
Um, even though we were not in an evacuation zone, it seemed like, oh, this might suck. Uh, and I have a friend that lives right on Tampa Bay and we talked and he's like, yeah, we're kind of expecting my parents' house to be destroyed. And then we went to bed. Charlie hit overnight. I think it made landfall at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., something like that. Woke up. Um, you're kind of in a haze because you have a headache because of the barometric pressure and you've mm. probably been drinking because you're, <laughs> you have nothing else to do. Everything's boarded up. Um, and uh, uh, it hit like Northport. Uh area i think that's why florida has has such a unique uh personality is because everybody's drinking whenever the the hurricanes hit um oh i could talk about that forever (laughs) um so anyway that area was like leveled and um and whatever and ian came in ian was a much much larger storm uh than charlie but ended up hitting almost the exact same area so uh the point i'm getting to eventually is that uh, a lot of the buildings in this area are are newly manufactured in the last 15 years so they're built to a newer code so the buildings may be standing right even though they're full of water or you know ruined in in some other way but the physical structure uh will probably remain um you know you have to like tear down all the drywall inside and replace the flooring and yada 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 but um, i saw a picture uh that Aaron shared last night of somebody in Florida um, showing the the view outside their window. And there was like, I mean, I don't know where the window is situated in the room, but like there is a good, I would say, you know, if, if, if it was a four foot window, like two feet of that was like water. Yeah. And it made me wonder about like, are buildings in Florida, like built to be watertight? I, I can't no. imagine. No, because if you, I know the picture you're talking about. So if you look at the bottom, there's water pooled on the ground. So okay. like there's water coming around the seal. It's not coming in quickly. Um, I, I would assume in that picture, like based on how clean it was, that that was uh, as the um, like as the water rose. So it probably sat there. And after it sat there for days and days, probably mm-hmm. it equalized and came through, you know, doors and other windows and water slowly started to rise in the building. That seems like a really optimistic photo. I can't imagine it held that way very long. Yeah. Um, in Florida, do you have storm chips like Eastern Canada does? Storm chips. I don't know what that is. Like, there's a run on chips, like potato chips. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what you go and get is you go and get canned tuna, mm-hmm. uh, which I, I don't know why, because but canned tuna, uh, bread, um, it's protein. Yeah, peanut butter. Um, water all the water uh is like immediately sold out and i think i've talked about the like the the moral dilemma i had with tyler when we had um matthew coming we went to the grocery store and there was a cart parked there and it had like a bunch of water and the person wasn't around we waited waited like waited and we i grabbed some out of their cart put it in ours and we checked out and Tyler was like that's stealing like yeah but we need water for our family too so it was like this huge moral Mm -hmm. crisis for him (laughs) uh and 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 also then for me to like explain like well yeah but i need to take care of our family it's like that person taking care of theirs. I didn't take all their water. I, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, and they were yeah. Around. So, uh, and then boxed wine because, um, you don't, I mean, you're supposed to keep it refrigerated, but you don't have to. Uh, and then the other thing my family always did is we would take, uh, all our crock pots and mm-hmm. like soup, whatever hunk of meat we had in the freezer, just get something in everything and get it good and hot. Um, make sure it's cooked because then you've got food for a few days of no power. Um, my manager, where I work now, uh, is in Sarasota, and he lost power Wednesday. Um, came back yesterday, but uh, even Saturday, he was saying that the expectations were being set that you won't have power until the tenth of October. So he was expected to be out for, you know, almost two weeks. Um, so he's thrilled it came back as early as it did. Uh, and the weird thing is, when there's no power, like if you have gas in your vehicle, like you can drive around on the roads that are open where there's not power lines and trees blocking the way. Um, but then the gas station may or may not be able to pump gas. Mm-hmm. So it's also probably like your one shot at air conditioning for a while when it's like ridiculously humid. Oh, yeah, I forgot degrees. about that part of it. Oh, that's the part that sucks the most because it gets hot in your house. It gets hot. You open the windows, you're like, oh, great, a breeze. Now it's like, you know, it feels like temperature is only like 103 inside instead of <laughs> 107 or whatever it is. Um, you hear a lot of generators and chainsaws and otherwise it's quiet. Like you hear vehicle engines, but like all the hum of everything that happens with electricity is gone, which is really eerie. Um, yeah. I, I fortunately have never had, uh, I never had in Florida more than uh, like three or four days without electricity after a storm. 
Um, so, what was the word again? Cic Storm uh, chips. Saccades. No. Saccades. <laughs> so I think the saccade is just like that. They were all conformed to, um, you know, the building code that makes them that way. Bringing it back to, yeah. I was trying. <laughs> when I was when I was a kid, we went down to um, uh, Miami Homestead area, like shortly after Andrew. Um, my dad already had like a trip planned down there for work, so like a month later, we went down, uh, and it was so striking on the interstate. Like, it was just like the interstate in that area of the state looks like is over like the edge of neighborhoods. You're just like looking down in neighborhoods and just house after house where like there was no roof or it was mm -hmm. half missing and everybody like, because insurance adjusters were trying to come out and like expedite the process. People spray paint their house number on the side of their house, just so it's easier to find because there's no street signs. They'd blown away. You know, like the whole, it's just a, it's a disaster. It's a mess. It's just, it's, it's worse than, than you plan for every time, hmm. uh, which is why everybody, at least everybody I know would drink heavily. Great. Storm's coming. We're 12 hours away from landfall. Let's start drinking and just go until you run out and whatever. It's, it's crappy. Well, we've reached that time where we find out what Sikad's actually is. Um, yeah. So it is <laughs> none of those. Is it plural? <laughs> is there a single singular Sikad? Um, there are, or like a micro saccade. Um, they're the tiny jerky eye movements in your eye to read. So oh. when you read, it's not, you're not continuously going from like left to right. You're taking Says it you. In. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you the video, but it's like, you're basically, your eyes are doing like small jerky, rapid eye movement to take in the information. And then your brain is kind of filling in the rest retroactively. So like, it's not, it's most commonly in reading, but like, even when you are just like switching focus from something to something else. So like reading signs or whatever. Yeah. And it's yeah. French for like jerky motion or jerk. Okay. Hmm. I, 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 I remember reading the theory of, of how people speed read, uh, which is like, you look at a page and then you just get the gist of the, what's happening in the page, as opposed to reading each word, you just sort of read like clumps somehow or you scan. And like that did not vibe with my brain uh, and still does not. So like, you like, like I, I'm one of those, I'm one of those way that laughed the words to you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm one of those that like, do, I, I don't actually have to like verbalize the words out loud but like my brain kind of needs to and so i'm a much slower reader than anyone else in in the family like like even the kids read faster than i do mm -hmm. i find that it depends on what i'm reading because there are some things that like conversationally or whatever the type of writing i it, can fly through faster than if i'm like okay this is nonfiction, and i'm like learning facts and that's true too for me but that's only because I'm finding myself having to reread stuff more in something that is thicker than something that is more, you know, casual. Yeah. I'm, I'm reading an academic book for the first time in, I don't know, like a, like a real ac academic, like written as like a supplement for like a course. So it's just like, here's the material. Like there's no need to put any kind of entertainment. Like you have to buy this yeah. book. Right. It has to have, doesn't have any, have any value besides you have to buy it, right? Like I, I think about like some of the like like clean code and yeah 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 uh, yeah that was hard working effectively <laughs> with legacy code like those like like they're boring they're academic but they're not like you, no one has to buy those like they're right. they're they had to have some kind of redeeming value for people to spend money on them whereas like an academic book is like the redeeming value is like you're the student you have to yeah. um, <laughs> and I'm not like dogging on this particular book I'm just setting it up as as that sort of standard and the result is like I will read two paragraphs and have to grab the dictionary like well on my phone like three times like 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 i'm sitting next to a dictionary that'd be ridiculous what the hell i didn't mean to mislead there um yeah i have to like look up words constantly i'm like what why <laughs> why well, use big words like this you could use smaller words i would still be impressed with what you're writing <laughs> i would still be impressed 
<laughs> Are you reading it for a core? No. Or okay. No. So you can get it's, to go at your own pace then. I do. Uh, it's let me see if I can grab it. It's, it's space related, isn't it? It is not. No, <laughs> I it thought it was going to be like it's the manual of how to operate. <laughs> it's the Hebrew Bible, feminist oh, and wow. intersectional perspectives. Oh yeah, that's for sure. Uh, course material. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. I'm I'm 38 pages in at this point. Um, they were a hard fought 38 pages. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> do you find it helpful to like highlight or annotate or anything like that or does that i just take notes you? on my ipad uh-huh. but i feel like writing and i just can't bring myself to write in this in fact it's a used book so it already has like things underlined and whatnot i can't add to that <laughs> i i it it just doesn't make sense to me like it's it's a i don't know i can't um but i also like this so 38 pages is like i don't know maybe like 20% of the book and that was all introduction. Mm-hmm. And so it went through um, uh, like a long history of feminism, uh, which was uh, just so fascinating because like in my mind, like feminism is like, it's a single a concept, right? Mm. Um, but clearly like that's super reductive. Um, and uh, you can distill yeah. it to a single concept. I think that's fair, but but to, I, I think that, I, yeah, I think that's fair. But I think, I think that putting, putting time in uh, to understanding like how we've gotten to this point. Yeah. Um, I actually have no idea what's coming next because I haven't gotten any, any <laughs> analysis of, of the Old Testament yet or the Hebrew Bible, right? Like I've only gotten through like uh, history of feminism and intersectionality. Um, I love that. I've only gotten through. <laughs> I, it's, <laughs> um, well, and then of course, like every page has like footnotes yep. of yeah. of uh, supporting materials, and it's like, oh, so I have this like ongoing Amazon list of books that I might also want to read, and I'm like 38 pages in, and I'm like, I can't actually purchase 45 other books to read. Like this is not, <laughs> there's nothing sustainable about this process. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I was like, there's nothing. Also. The- the wikipedia that's the other benefit of having the ipad is that i can go to wikipedia yeah. and also like if they're talking about an author like i can go get the wikipedia but then also like there's link backlinks there so it's like 38 pages i probably spend like <laughs> I, I it's such a fucking rabbit hole i uh so that <laughs> well, that that makes me think of the, the difference between uh these two soccer books that i so one of them i read and one of them i am still technically reading <laughs> I say technically because I haven't picked it up in months. Um, one of them was uh, I don't remember it, uh, how soccer uh, how soccer describes the world or how soccer uh, explains mm-hmm. the world. Um, it's basically about glo- globalism and globalism's effect on different cultures through the lens of soccer. And it was really interesting, well written, easy to read. Got through it, finished it, was proud of myself. So I finished a book. Uh, then there's the inverted pyramid, uh, which um, is about soccer uh, football formations and how they how they or the origins of them. Uh, and this is very widely sort of read within soccer analysts and stuff because it describes in in soccer they have like each position basically has a number. Uh, associated with it one to 11 uh one is the goalkeeper uh you know 11 i and 11 is is the person and, and what's interesting about about the numbers is that they don't correspond necessarily to where those players are positioned on the field today in the current formations so an 11 is typically somebody who's in the middle of the pitch like a midfielder or your number nine is like a a you know single striker at the top of the at your top of your formation um and so it, it goes basically it sort of traverses the history of soccer from like just something just a bunch of kids kicking balls through it becoming a professional sport and how uh how formations evolved and how they basically just started by like just basically a line of people running after them. you know how like in kids like <laughs> I was gonna say kids yeah. soccer where it's like a yeah. clump and they're just that like... is that is what it was and like Jeez. when it when when the 
person in front of the line dropped the ball. They just went to the person behind them and they kept going. And like there wasn't any sort of rhyme or reason. And then that slowly evolved into things where they started passing the ball, gasp and like moving the ball in different places. And for a long time, like there was this this idea of an inverted pyramid where like there's all your all your forward your forward players are all the attackers and you have like one or two people that are just sitting in the back uh, because all of your focus is, is on the attack and, and the way that that basically reverses to be now it's either, you know, a more consistent like three, three, four or like four, three, three coming from going from the back forward or uh, you know, like four, four, two or something where it's just more, more, you know, and more mobility. Uh, that's much harder to read. It's much more like, and in 1924, <laughs> Jonathan Rumfeld did the unthinkable. <laughs> like, and it's definitely in that just very, just very stuffy. It sounds accent. dodgy. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. <laughs>